Ubuntu 2404 was just released. This is the latest LTS release of Ubuntu, making this a really big release, right? This is a big deal. Every time the new LTS comes out, it's a big deal. Most Ubuntu users are on the LTS. Certainly everybody that installs Ubuntu as a server is probably using the LTS version of Ubuntu server. And I would say probably 95% of desktop Ubuntu users probably stick to the LTS releases. So this is 2404 codenamed Naive Nitwit. Wait, that's not right. Noble Numbat. One of the first things you'll notice about Ubuntu 2404 is the new installer. Now this new Flutter based installer that they're using, this has been around in the interim releases. I know 2310 had the uh, new Flutter based installer, but again, most Ubuntu users are going from one LTS to the next LTS, which is a two year gap. And for those of you that are going to move from 2204 to 2404, just know the installer has completely changed. This new Flutter based installer is even better in 2404 than it even was in 2310. I thought it was really fantastic in 2310. For one thing, we've got uh, new artwork, some new graphics, some illustrations here. We've got more accessibility options here as well. Uh, choosing uh, keyboard and layout, it's automatically detected. Uh, English English US for me. You know, it's the same very easy Ubuntu installer, even though it's a completely different application. It's still basically you click OK a handful of times and you're done. You have the option of connecting to the Internet or not during the installation. I'm just going to run through a quick installation. So I'll install Ubuntu. Now, this is interesting because we have the option to do the interactive installation, which is just your regular installation or the automated installation. Now, this is new. This is what Ubuntu is referring to as provisioning. What provisioning is, is you feed this a configuration file and it'll run through the installation based on what you give as this installation file. It's basically a YAML file that's got all of your settings already in it. And what this does is it speeds up the process. It allows you to really automate the installation process of Ubuntu, especially if you're installing Ubuntu with the same software and settings to maybe hundreds or thousands of machines. So that is a really neat new feature, but I'm just going to go through the standard interactive installation. And now which apps would you like to start with? You have default and extended. Now default is the minimal installation, meaning it's just the bare essential apps. So you get a web browser and you know, you got like your basic utilities, but not much else. The extended selection offers a little bit more software. So you'll get, you know, like your office suite and things like that. For me, I'm going to do the extended selection just because I would like to see all of the software that gets installed with that. So I'm going to go ahead and click next. Install recommended proprietary software. Now, unless you know that you can get by with purely free drivers, you probably need to tick this on. So install proprietary third party software. So this is your graphics drivers and Wi-Fi drivers, especially if you're on a laptop, chances are your Wi-Fi card has to have a proprietary driver or you're not going to have Wi-Fi on that laptop. So make sure you tick this thing on. You also have an option to download and install support for additional media formats. So this is all your multimedia codecs. And yes, you should also tick that on really, unless you have a reason not to just by default, tick both of these on and then click next. Next up, how do we want to install Ubuntu? Do we want to erase the disk and give the entire disk over to Ubuntu, which is what I'm going to do in this VM, or do I want to do a manual installation? So maybe I want to partition the drives in a, in a way so that I can dual boot Ubuntu alongside another operating system. We also have the advanced features here under erase disk and install. For example, if I go to advanced features, does it offer me ZFS. It does. So we do have the option to install ZFS as our file system. Now in the very first iterations of this new Flutter based installer, it did not offer ZFS. It didn't have this advanced features thing where you could, you know, tick on ZFS, but now that's been added. But for me, I'm going to go with the default. So I'll just do whatever file system they're using by default. They typically default to extend four. So that's what I'll go with. And then we need to create our username and account. I'm going to call my user DT. I'm going to call the host name of this computer Ubuntu dash vert. And then my username is DT. We need to create a strong and complicated password for the DT user. And then we need to repeat the strong and complicated password. Require my password to log in is ticked on by default. Leave that ticked on. You should always have to enter a password to get into your computer because if you don't require a password, anybody can get into it. And that's a nightmare for 
security and privacy reasons. And then you have the option to use Active Directory. I don't use Active Directory, so I'll leave that ticked off. And then finally, we need to choose our time zone. So my time zone is correctly chosen. They've chosen the central time zone here in the US for me. So I'll just click next. And then we get a little summary of everything we have chosen thus far. Everything looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the install button and away we go. And this portion of the installer typically takes about five to 10 minutes on my machine. So I'm gonna go grab me a cup of coffee. I'll be back once Ubuntu 2404 LTS has finished installing. And that installation has already completed. I stepped away for probably less than five minutes to grab me a cup of coffee and it's already done. Now to finish the installation, of course, you need to reboot the computer. So I'm going to go ahead and reboot now. And we've come to the login manager. I'm going to go ahead and click on my DT username. Now, if I wanted to, I could go down here to the little cog wheel. And we do still have the option to boot into the Ubuntu desktop on X11, but by default, it defaults to GNOME using Wayland. I'm going to use the Wayland session. It should be fine in this VM. GNOME on Wayland actually has gotten a pretty good, it's pretty close to being almost a pretty much a drop-in replacement for GNOME on X11. When you first log into the Ubuntu desktop, you get your little welcome screen here, and then you click next, and then you just answer these questions for some additional setup. The very first screen is, do you want to enable Ubuntu Pro? Now, Ubuntu Pro is a subscription service for additional security updates and support. Now, you typically probably don't need Ubuntu Pro if you're just a regular desktop Ubuntu user. This is mainly for people that are installing this in uh, business enterprise settings where you may want that additional level of support. So let me click next. And then we have the option to help improve Ubuntu by sharing some data. So this is analytics, right? Do we want to send some information about our computer back to Canonical? And they just need this information. They want to know what kind of machines people are typically installing Ubuntu on. That way they can make a better product. Now, by default, it's ticked on, yes, share system data with the Ubuntu team, and I'm fine with that. But if you didn't want that, you could always click no here. But I'll, I'll go ahead and leave that ticked on as yes. And then get started with more applications. Do we want to go ahead and open the software center, which they're calling the App Center? Do we want to go ahead and open the App Center and install some extra packages? No, not right now. I'm just going to go ahead and click Finish. And now we're done with the welcome application. So let's talk about some of the obvious changes in Ubuntu 2404. Now, again, 95% of the people that are going to install Ubuntu 2404, but the 95% of the people that just run Ubuntu, run LTS versions of Ubuntu, they never touch the inner ARM releases. So most Ubuntu users never saw 2310. So this is going to be a brand new version of GNOME, GNOME 46. Uh, it's a big change from the version of GNOME from two years ago that was in 2204, right? So that's the, the very first change is uh, GNOME is just a lot better. It looks a lot better. It just feels a lot better. It's a lot faster. It's a lot more optimized. Obviously, it's now defaulting to Wayland as the graphical server. You've got your really cool dynamic workspace switcher here, uh, indicator here if I had multiple workspaces. Another neat feature is what they call edge tiling. So let me open up a couple of different windows. So I'm going to open up the Nautilus file manager. I'll also open up Firefox, which is, of course, our default browser. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag Firefox over to this edge. And it just half tiles it. But you notice I get a little uh, window switcher over here. Now, if I had multiple windows, I'd have multiple windows open in this little window switcher. And basically, this is a selector where if I select this, this is the window that gets placed in the other half. <laughs> so that is pretty cool, right? Uh, I don't know, you know, if it's something I would use all the time, but I like that little feature. If you haven't had the opportunity to check out GNOME 46, you know, the suite of applications, the uh, GNOME suite of applications has gotten really good. They're all themed very well. They're all very consistent with their lib ad way to theming. Uh, the GNOME uh, file manager, Nautilus, is actually really good. It's got this new search feature as well for those that you that do a lot of file searching. One interesting thing feature is when you do a large file copy. So for example, you have two Nautilus windows open side by side. Maybe you're copying one file, uh, a really large directory or a really large file to the other window. And you, you would often get that little pop-up dialog box showing you the progress as the file copies. Well, you no longer get that as a pop-up window right now. What it's doing is in the bottom here of the sidebar, you will get a little progress bar as that file or that directory copies over. <laughs> I actually really 
really like that too because it, it really makes sense. You really don't need it being in its own dedicated window just tracking the progress of a copy job. Now let me take a look at some of the software included by default. Remember I didn't do the standard default installation which is a minimal installation. I did the extended installation so I get a little bit more software installed. Instead of just a browser and the basic GNOME utilities I also get things like an office suite and a photo manager and extra things that are not going to be in the default minimal install. The first thing I want to point out are two tools if you're new to Ubuntu or just new to Linux in general one of the great things about Ubuntu as a desktop distribution is it really makes things easy for the new user. For example if you need additional drivers you need those proprietary graphics drivers and Wi-Fi drivers maybe you didn't tick on the boxes during the install process because in the installation you had the opportunity to install those things but you know you have this program right here additional drivers which it's going to take a second to load and then it's going to start searching for all available proprietary drivers for my hardware now it's not going to find any because i'm in a virtual machine and all the virtual machine drivers are actually open source so there's nothing to do there but uh, on physical hardware, especially for those of you that have an NVIDIA card, you need the NVIDIA proprietary graphics drivers. Again, on a laptop, you're probably going to need a proprietary Wi-Fi driver. So just open that program. Again, if you didn't have that ticked on during the installation process, if you had that ticked on during the installation process, you've already got those proprietary drivers. And a new tool that they just added to 2404 is Firmware Updater. So now you have the ability to update your firmware again if you need to now again I'm in a virtual machine so there are no devices to be found that need firmware as far as the programs a lot of them are your standard default GNOME applications we have the camera application now this is new so before Ubuntu was always defaulting to cheese as its webcam application but now they are using camera 46.2. Now camera, that's a very generic name. I believe the actual name of the program is called Snapshot. I can verify that if I do Control Alt T to bring up a terminal. Let me zoom in. If I just type Snapshot, yeah, that is the camera application. I've always found it confusing that GNOME insists on calling their applications these super generic names. Camera doesn't tell me what the real name of that program is videos doesn't tell me what the real name of that program is like if you want to go if you didn't already have these programs installed you know for example if i wasn't a gnome user and i wanted hey i really like their uh, webcam app let me install it well how are you going to install it you can't go to the command line and do a sudo apt install camera because you know that's not the name of the program i just i, I wish they would change that i don't think they ever will though i, I think for whatever reason the gnome devs are kind of stubborn when it comes to this generic naming scheme so with the extended set of software we have the full LibreOffice suite installed if i go to the second tab here uh, we have a BitTorrent client you know we got some extra applications here i was actually looking for firefox Firefox is not in this search panel because it's pinned to the sidebar. Anything pinned to the sidebar will not appear in the little dash overview here. So we already had Firefox open. Let's go ahead and open it one more time just to see what version of Firefox we are on. You notice that Firefox loads quite fast, right? It's, you know, it is installed as a snap pack, but it's definitely not slow. If I go to about Firefox, this is Firefox 125.0.2. And you can see this is the Mozilla Firefox snap for Ubuntu. Close that out. We have Thunderbird for our email client, which makes sense. If you're going to have Mozilla Firefox for the web browser, might as well have Mozilla Thunderbird for your email client. And Thunderbird now defaults to being installed as a snap pack as well. We have Rhythmbox for our audio player. We click on Rhythmbox. Let's go to About Rhythmbox. This is Rhythmbox 3.4.7, a fantastic audio player. And then we have our... App Center. So this is the software store that they call the App Center. And this is going to be quite a bit different for those of you coming from the last LTS 2204. Right, 2404 has a different software center than what you were using. And I think this is a welcome upgrade from the other software center they were using the previous, uh, what do they call it, Ubuntu software. Now this is App Center. It's a little 
cleaner. It looks a lot more modern, a lot more fresh. And if we do a search for something that isn't installed, maybe I want to install Discord, proprietary software, Discord, right? But because the software center does install snaps, so anything found on Snapcraft, and a lot of the snaps are proprietary software. I mean, that's the point of having that third party store is because you can't really put proprietary software like Discord uh, packaged as a dev pack. And that's usually, you want to keep all of that stuff out of those repos. So you have them as snap packages should you need them. And if I wanted to, I could install that. You can see this is the channel information as far as the snap channel that you're installing Discord from. So all of your proprietary software, which again, in years past, proprietary software was a problem on Linux because a lot of especially Windows users coming over to Linux, they want all of their proprietary software that they're used to. Maybe you're used to using things like Discord and Zoom and Spotify and all of that stuff. Well, now, you know, all of it is available in the Snap Store, so you should have no problem getting any reasonably popular piece of software installed on your Ubuntu desktop. One thing to know is this new App Center does not have the ability to sideload a dev pack. By sideload, I mean you go download a .dev package from somewhere, right? A third-party .dev package, which is kind of dangerous anyway. And the reason they're not allowing you to do that is for security reasons. You really shouldn't just go grab any random dev pack on the internet and then install it. Uh, but, you know, these days, because we have these alternatives like Snap and Flatpak and App and we have these other packaging formats to go get that stuff. Do you really need to go grab a random dib? Probably not. For most people, I'd say 99.9% .9 of Ubuntu users are never going to have to go grab some random dib off the internet and install it. But if you needed to, you still can. You just can't do it from the App Center. What you would have to do is in a terminal, uh, pull up a terminal. Let me zoom in. You would have to install a tool such as sudo apt install gdebi. GDB is a graphical application that will install those third-party dev packages that you go and grab for you. So that's my recommendation if you still need to do that. Now let me open up the settings manager because there are some different options in this now. So one of the things you'll notice is under accessibility, you have quite a bit of options here, a lot more options than you used to have. And this is good. I really, accessibility has always been an issue on Linux and really the only desktop environment that really takes accessibility very seriously and actually attempts to, to you know, cater to the crowd that needs these accessibility options. GNOME is the only desktop environment that really does a good job with that. So I do have to applaud GNOME on that. Some other new options that might be new, if I go under sharing, we have media sharing, that's interesting. Uh, I don't want to do this in a VM, but that would be cool. So you do have some different stuff going on. I believe mouse and touchpad also have some new settings. Now I'm in a virtual machine and I'm not using uh, any computer with a touchpad. But if I were, this setting system here should add a toggle which stops the touchpad from being disabled while you're typing. So if you need that functionality, if you're on a machine that has a touchpad, you will see that as an option. If I go to displays, that's not what I wanted. I wanted to go to appearance. We still have the ability to turn on our default light theme or go to a dark theme. Typically, I default to a dark theme. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. You can see it switches our wallpaper from the light colored numbat to the uh, very dark gray, really almost black wallpaper of the numbat. I'm not crazy about that. I think that's a little too dark. I'm trying to resize this window. We can actually see the wallpaper now and make this a little smaller. Let's check out some of the other wallpapers that are available. Let's see. Yeah, I kind of like that. That's interesting. Let me make this window even smaller and get it out of the way. Ah, oh, I love that picture. Whoever took that picture, <laughs> that is really nice. That is a beautiful mountain landscape there. And then we have some more uh, Numbat artwork. Yeah, this is really nice. Whoever did that has some real talent. I, I like this desert landscape as well. And uh, some more nature photography, some more abstract art. Actually, this abstract art, all of these abstract art pictures are just really gorgeous. I don't know if it was the same artist that did these or different artists uh, contributing. But these are really nice. And then you have the crown for the noble numbat, so, which we've already seen. For me, I think I actually kind of like the abstract art. I think I would 
I think I'd want to go with something like that. For me, yeah, I can get down with that. Let's talk briefly about some of the under the hood stuff, just in case you were curious about some of the software under the hood. So if I do a uname dash R, you can see that we are on kernel version 6.8.0. If I do a where is Pipewire, Pipewire is the default audio server now, and this is different from the last LTS because the last LTS was two years ago and they were still defaulting to Pulse Audio on that. So Pipewire is now your default audio server if you upgrade from 2204 to 2404. One other minor change you may or may not pick up on, there has been some work done on the Ubuntu font family. The Ubuntu font family, I think it's the best font family uh, out there as far as you know, free and open source fonts. And I install them on every machine. I especially love Ubuntu Mono, especially in terminals and text editors. But the standard uh, Ubuntu font is also great. And they've worked on the fonts to make them a little... Uh, Thinner, which actually makes them look a little sharper, a little crisper. So if you install Ubuntu 2404 and think, that, hey, they, they've done some real magical stuff to the fonts, they look really good, just know that that was intentional. They, they worked on the Ubuntu font family a little bit, and I do think they look even better than how they looked before. Some other under the hood stuff that you may or may not notice, but I think it's really important work that they did on this release. For those of you that use laptops, you should see better power usage, especially those of you using AMD laptops. They did a lot of work under the hood for a better power consumption on your laptops. For those of you that are gamers, they also worked a little bit on improving gaming performance on Ubuntu, which I, I know a lot of people these days, you know, because of Steam on Linux, a lot of people are gaming on Linux. It's, you know, it's not like it was back in my day where it was strictly nerds and developers that use Linux. Now it's just normal people, like normal, you know, like the young teenage gamer crowd, even, you know, just using desktop Linux. And gaming performance is a big deal for these people. And uh, one of the, there was some bottleneck due to virtual memory mapping limits on Ubuntu or something that, you know, they've tried to eliminate that little bottleneck. So you should see better performance with your gaming. Overall, I think this new release of Ubuntu is fantastic. I've actually been waiting for this new release 2404 to come out for some time because, you know, these LTS releases, we only get them every two years. And I've really been itching to put some machines on Ubuntu LTS, especially some web servers, because on web servers, I typically always just install Ubuntu LTS server. And, you know, the last server's two years old. I wanted the newest one. So now as of today, we've got Ubuntu 2404 desktop and server out. I'm going to go ahead and uh, update some machines to Ubuntu 2404 on the server as well. Now, before I go, I do want to thank a few special people. I want to thank the producers of this episode. Gabe James, Matt, Paul, Steve, Wes, Arcotic, Armor, Dragon, Commander, Angry, Darloff, George, Lee, Matthew, Methos, Nate, Erion, Paul, Peace, Arch of Door, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Soul, Astri, Tenor, and Tools, Devler, War, Gentoo, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at the latest release of Ubuntu 2404, Noble, Numbat, whatever the hell a Numbat is, this would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work, want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.